Hello everyone, I'm Christian Bean with the AWR group of National Instruments. And in this demonstration, I'm gonna continue talking about a new feature we've developed in version 14, uh, network synthesis. And in this case, we're gonna be synthesizing uh, matching networks for a power amplifier that we've characterized uh, via load pool. So we think one of the big value adds for this feature is integration directly with load pool data and all our load pool capabilities. Uh, so this example will show some of that. So the idea here, <clears throat> if I go to the software, uh, we've got a device we've characterized, uh, again, with load pull. It's a measured load pull file. And we've plotted contours uh, on this 5-ohm Smith chart. We've plotted contours for power added efficiency and power delivered to the load. And we've got a series of contours. They're each at the 1 dB compression point at a specific uh, output power in the case of the power contours and a specific efficiency level in the case of the efficiency contours at different frequencies. Uh, so those are the red and blue contours respectively. Uh, one way to look at this, if I toggle these off, we also have what we call an overlap contour. Uh, so this is the combination of a 63% efficiency and a 51 dBm power capability, again at the 1 dB compression point. And just to show the idea, it's set up to be tunable with frequency. So if I change the center frequency there, we can of course see the contour position change on the Smith chart. That essentially traces out the trajectory we want to hit with our matching network. Uh, so it, this point in a design flow, a designer would be comfortable with the performance capability of the part, and they would go about designing a matching network by hand. But we can do that with the synthesis wizard, and I'd like to show some of the specifics uh, in regard to using load pull data with our wizard. So I've pulled up the synthesis wizard instance. You can see the frequency range we're considering, same as our load pull data, essentially 1.8 to 2 gigahertz. In this case, the impedance B, that's our device, if you will, characterized by our load pull data. And we're going to synthesize matching networks uh, that match to our system impedance of 50 ohms. Uh, if I look at the components tab, uh, we're considering just uh, inductors and capacitors in both the series and shunt locations up to a maximum of uh, six sections for our matching network. And we're forcing uh, the component that's next to port B that is next to the device uh, to be a series transmission line. And we're actually going to use microstrip lines defined by a substrate instead of uh, ideal transmission lines. Next tab is parameter limits. If I look at the inductor, for instance, and pull up the user interface here, you can see we're actually going to consider only 5% tolerance standard parts. Uh, so these show the values of inductors we're going to use as we search topologies for our matching network, only these values. So the idea, if you have a design kit in the lab that's a 5% tolerance kit, you can tell the wizard only use those parts when you search for answers. Uh, same idea with the microstrip lines, we're going to use a uh, one mil uh, step size, essentially, in our search. DC and bias feed tab, <laughs> you'll notice here, port B to ground, the D key, excuse me, the DC constraint is open, uh, so we don't want to short the drain or collector of our device with our matching net network, of course, and so this just tells the wizard to make sure that's a DC open on that side of the matching network. Goals tab, in this case, uh, if we look at the two measurements we have, these are directly based on the load pole data. They mimic exactly what we had when we were showing the contours. So PAE at the 1 dB compression point and power delivered to the load, uh, again defined at the 1 dB compression point. And then importantly, the goals, uh, these aren't going to be set up as impedance targets or anything. They're going to be set up directly based on performance. Uh, so we're going to ask for greater than 51 dBm, so greater than uh, approximately 125 watts, and greater than our 63% uh, efficiency. 
uh, both across the band. And if I go to the results tab, we've saved results, but I can actually resynthesize. Now let me do that or to show you uh, the speed at which we synthesize results. Just a second or two there. Uh, if I sort on cost, you can see we're generating a number of uh, low cost or zero cost networks, meaning we're actually hitting both of those goals. And I can output that to Microwave Office. And we get an automatically generated uh, data display here. Uh, you can look at the impedances we're getting from the different networks. And we can also put that in a little bit more sophisticated data display. And again, click through the networks here in the user folder that we've generated. Show the different network and show the uh, performance across frequency uh, that we're getting. So this shows, uh, again, the efficiency and the power delivered to the load across our frequency band of interest. And as I update each network, it shows the performance for each network. And I can also uh, go in and, if needed, activate the trace to show the uh, impedance we're getting from each network on the Smith graph. Uh, so again, we're integrating directly with load pole data with the synthesis wizard. And you can see it makes it very easy to uh, synthesize output matching networks uh, very quickly and speed up your design flows and let you search through a different matching network topologies uh, to get your design started. Thank you.